District 7 is an unusual district uh, and is something that really needs to be addressed here in Knoxville. The District 7 uh, makeup is, consists of a very wide district. It goes from Farragut, which is far west, all the way to far east to Holston Hills. And then it also includes Mechanicsville, which is a downtown neighborhood. Uh, a lot of questions have been raised why this district was drawn this way. What it seems to do is it seems to uh, take away any power from black voting, in my estimation, because the, any votes that are cast here in the inner city are not likely to carry much weight because Mechanicsville is a very is on the definitely on the lower end of the scale of uh, income levels for Knoxville, while Farragut and Holston Hills are amongst the highest that we have. Uh, what has been claimed and has been purported by some is that this has been done intentionally to keep a uh, black vote from really carrying much weight in the state senate. I'm Bentley Marlowe, president of the Mechanicsville Neighborhood Watch Association, and uh, I was approached by Reverend Butler who's been our catalyst all through the formation of our Neighborhood Watch Association about three weeks ago to, uh, about the possibility to host a debate for the Tennessee Senate District 7. Initially, this idea came from one of our members over a year ago, but we just did not have the mechanism in place to uh, do an objective, uh, well thought out process. With the Neighborhood Watch being developed and, and running well, uh, and having a great interest in what goes on in Mechanicsville and Knoxville. Now we have a wonderful platform in order for us to bring in uh, candidates. Obviously, this won't be the only one that we will do. It is the first one. As I said, my name is Chuck Williams, and I want to thank Pastor Butler for opening the church, and Mr. Bentley Marlowe, and the Mechanicsville Neighborhood Watch Association for putting this together. I would have been thanking Stacy, but... <laughs> I guess he got lost, and I'm glad to see that the brand you didn't get lost, so welcome to. Thank you, Chef. Stacy Campbell. I've never met him personally. I've uh, I've seen him before, and so I, I know him to to see him around town. Uh, he does own property in the Mechanicsville neighborhood, but really all the the information we have on him, I have at least I have, is from the newspapers, where he's been uh, claimed to be a slumlord by some of his tenants that he doesn't upkeep his houses properly. Uh, he also is in the papers for putting in legislation, legislation, which in my opinion is, is offensive, that uh, things that are really seem to be self-serving, that he, from what I can tell, he appears to be someone who's focused on trying to get his name out as an ultra-conservative, that uh, name recognition within the Republican Party uh, will, will carry him along. Uh, he might be true, right though, I don't really know. He, there have been numerous things that have come up during this uh, uh, election. His signage uh, has been claimed that it's uh, copyright infringement or trademark infringements on Coca-Cola and Campbell's Soup because his signs uh, uh, look very much like the font for either of those companies where you're not really sure what you're seeing. Uh, that's what I think Stacy's strength is, is just name recognition. Uh, and every time he gets this negative press, it's a positive for him, I would think, in his mind. I don't know that uh, personally how he is. Both of the candidates said they knew him personally and actually liked him personally. Uh... Further discussion, Representative Campfield. I'm sorry to step out for a second. Could we in this committee add an amendment to put two more members of the majority party on the registry of election finance. You're in favor of that, aren't you, Mike? You're going to second my motion? 
Discussion? Representative Turner, you're right now. I'd like to amend the amendment and put two members of the Libertarian Party, one member of the Communist Party, one member of the uh, Southern Freedom Party, two members of the Ku Klux Klan, one member of the John Birch Society. Are you all writing this down? Because I think it's about how ridiculous this other amendment is. But that is a serious amendment if he wants to proceed. Now, let me explain something. The neighborhood I grew up in in Oak Ridge died around my parents. My car was burned one evening by a drug-addicted methamphetamine user. We had to move my mother out. You want to talk about slumlords? I know about slumlords. I know what they can do to a city. Randy's right. People in Farragut want the same thing that the people here in the urban community want. The problem is nobody comes into the urban community. They'll come, seek votes. Once they're elected, they'll forget about them. And that's the biggest problem. When you sit here and look at the way these roads are, when you look at the undeveloped lands, when you look at the rural high schools, Please state your opinion and thoughts on the immigration issue and specifically state whether or not you would support a bill similar to Arizona's law requiring proof of legal immigration status upon request by law enforcement. I would never in my life support any law such as that. It's unconstitutional. It's unfair. I've talked to numerous police officers, numerous sheriff's deputies, they got better things to do than to worry about if somebody is documented or not just because he ran a stop sign. Committed a felony? Yes. That's a different situation. You know, the media tries to portray that uh, the Hispanic community is responsible for a lot of the crime and stuff. But I can truthfully say this newspaper that supports and endorses me proves that they're not. The issue, again, is not these people, it is not the immigrants. The issue is the jobs. The issue is we have let all of our good work go to India and China and Vietnam. We can sit here and argue with each other over Hispanics taking my job or driving down a wage rate. Folks, we got to get busy getting it back. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not asking to elect me as your U.S. Congressman. We'll let Jimmy Duncan worry about that stuff. You would let him answer for that. But I'm asking you to let me go out in this competitive world and get it for you here in East Tennessee and Knoxville. With companies hiring undocumented aliens, it does drive down the cost of jobs. But how many of us that are not working are going to stand out in the hot sun clubhouse and they're holding up a stop sign? How many of us want to get up at 4.30 in the morning in the back of a pickup truck? Go to Grange Academy. Between the two candidates themselves, uh, Randy Walker being the Democratic candidate and Chuck Williams being an independent, uh, both of them seem to hold some fairly conservative viewpoints. Then, but the, the real difference that we could see from them was their approach. Uh, Randy Walker seemed to be uh, possibly a little bit uh, more well-spoken and was focused on jobs for East Tennessee. Uh, Chuck Williams, on the other hand, seemed to carry more personal fire, more of a, an anger with what was going on in the state legislature and uh, some of what he saw as injustices uh, being done to some of the inner city communities. So either candidate, I think, had strong, uh, strong points to make, strong uh, opinions, but it really came down to how they did it. I think if you live in an area that you feel, and you work in an area that you feel you need to be armed, then you should be able to be armed, if that's what you feel. People work in these convenience stores late at night in, in bad areas. There's no police around there. They may feel they need to be armed. If that makes them feel better, fine. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. I carry it under what the law states. As far as carrying it in a bar, when I go out, I don't drink. If after the 
madness was over, and Randy said, come on, let's go have a beer. I'll sit there and sip the Coke, because I can't do it because I'm carrying a handgun. I have no problem with that. I carry it, one, threats were made after my son was killed, and I was protecting myself. Two, in this day and age, and I travel all over this county, things can happen. Because I live by the rule, if anybody gets hurt, Chuck ain't going to be the last one to get hurt. And I will never change what that law is. I don't care about, don't care about the red lights anymore. I don't care about the deers. I don't care about the guns and, and bars. Or My children's education is important to me. So how do I know that 16 years from now, something different is going to happen and we're not just going to vote for you because you showed up tonight? As far as why you should vote for me, I've been throughout the district and I admire some of the things Randy said he has done. We both more or less have been out there to a point. But everybody in the urban community, people out west, North Knoxville, East Knoxville, they know who Chuck Williams is. I know they call me all the time when they have problems. And I have called many, a commissioner, an agency, dealing with situations and helping people. And I know the issues as far as I don't want nobody drilling on the top of the Smoky Mountain. Listen, I want TVA to pay for their own mistakes. We have a Magnolia Corridor plan that's been on board I don't know how many years and they still haven't done nothing. You have a Mechanicsville plan, you have a Burlington plan, a Five Points plan. Nothing is being done. You as county and city, but as a state legislator, you can threaten, you can bully, and now listen. I've been throughout all these communities, and that's why, starting tomorrow, 11 a.m., you should start casting your vote for Chuck Williams. This is not about Republicans and Democrats. This is not about the Tea Party. I support some of the things that you are talking about. They're frustrated. This is not about right to life, and it's not about gun. This is about you and your representation. I'm sick and tired of Representative Campbell's antics. You elect me state senator. When you elect me state senator, I'll go to work for day one for you. I'll understand I wasn't elected to represent Democrats or Republicans. I wasn't elected to represent Independents or Tea Party. I was elected to represent Knoxville. And I'll never forget that. Call yourself a Republican, call yourself a Democrat, call yourself Tea Party, call yourself a mugwump. Call yourself a business person, an urban person, a suburban person, or a working man. We're all not civilians. We have to stand together for this community. This is the way the campaign and the election should be run. Not by simply going out and trying to collect all the money you can and trying to control the message through a uh, an, an advertising process, but getting the message through people. And I was disappointed uh, that uh, Representative Canfield was not here. I hope to see him in the next year. Thank you. Jobs. And this is what you have to be able to do. But it's not just jobs, it's people's needs. It's the Smoky Mountains. It's TVA crushing them. It's the colleges keep jacking up the tuition. These are the problems that we have here that were not addressed by my opponent. Well, I the opponent because the other one didn't show up. And this is why I'll be the next state senator for this district. Thank you, sir. Thank you.